I thought it would be interesting to look over the main contenders for Pool A and we're going to start with a quick look at Fiji ahead of their clash against England, beginning with attack. Fiji's phase play system is essentially a same side flow pattern run by the 9 and 10. The general aim is to keep the tempo high by playing outside the 3rd and 4th defender. Here we see them punching up to Cuera initially and then working the same side flow to get outside that 4th defender. They then start to work it back again looking to get the ball outside those wide defenders and pulling the Canadian defence across as far as they can with the intention of keeping them constantly in transition. As the ball comes back we can see the Canadian defence is starting to fill out with gaps appearing in the tackle line and space out wide. The move's let down by an unforced error but we're starting to see how their basic but fast same side attack pattern stretches defences. Now people often refer to Fiji having a lack of structure. But it's often down to the fact they play with a very uncomplicated game, focusing on excellent handling and evasive skills, backing themselves to create individual mismatches off a first phase ball. Against Samoa, they frequently ran strike moves off first phase ball, and here we see them open the Samoan defence up and nearly finish a try, if not for a clumsy piece of play on the ground. And again here we see them use one phase and then look to get the ball into the outside channels, using the pods as a way to make the defence chase the ball rather than as a primary means of pushing forward. Without doubt though, the greatest strength of the Fijian game is their exceptional broken field running skills and counter attack. The support once a line break has been created is exceptional and here we can see one of the best tries of the year with Matavesi starting and finishing the move. Again, against Samoa we saw a wonderful counter attack go the length of the field and through multiple phases to produce a score for the legendary Nakawara. It's a fantastic piece of attack and the way they identify and exploit space is absolutely second to none. And the Fijians are flying on the outside. Running him over as well, cut it back inside. Genius bit of skill here. Back in field from Angera, the captain. Still they have possession. The Fijians have worked their way all the way up inside the 22. Fantastic stuff behind the back four. Bola Bola coming wide. Lobo Balabu. Now the big man. Matadingo puts his head down. Danger all around. Penatali. Bola Bola just getting that width. Solid tackle coming in. Noneva. So Bola Bola. Dummies. Beats us here in the booth. And flicks it back inside. Champagne rugby. They'll score another. Can you believe it? Now defence on the other hand is a big issue for Fiji, and whilst blessed with some truly devastating one-on-one -on -one defenders, the Fijian defence tends to be quite passive, with a slow line speed and using single defenders they will either make a big hit or concede the game line. But more worrying from a Fijian point of view is how slowly they fold around the corner, and here we can see the lack of urgency means that in only two phases they have become completely structureless. I think that's partly disorganisation and partly fitness related, as over the course of the warm-up games we saw them struggle to maintain the tempo and intensity of their game in both attack and defence. Now another serious weakness is their inability in defence to make an impact around the breakdown, continually conceding yards and territory as they stand off the gain line and wait for the attackers to come to them. So here we're starting to get a feel for Fiji's relative strengths and weaknesses, and with ball in hand and when the field is broken defences themselves, there are a few teams better than Fiji at exploiting those. But in my opinion they just don't have the attacking structure to continually break down the organised defences of Australia, Wales and England. If the game loosens up they will surely be able to exploit those chances and put away some excellent tries. But the issue is really going to be defence and I don't see enough fitness and organisation for Fiji to really live up to the continual pressure teams like England, Wales and Australia will be able to build. All of the above coupled with the quick turnaround of only 5 days between England and Australia makes me believe that whilst they might give one of the big three in the pool a bloody nose, the chances of them going home with anything other than a solitary win over Uruguay are pretty slim. Thanks for watching and don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube.